All right. So, Trump and coronavirus. Um, I didn't post a lot of videos about the coronavirus at the time, but it was mid to late January. I think it was around January 20th when I first started getting real concerned about the virus and I started warning my social circles, started warning people on Facebook about it coming and how it was being downplayed in the media and I got real frustrated about the impeachment hearings and Kobe Bryant's death, not because Kobe Bryant died, but because the media wasn't saying anything about the coronavirus and they were only talking about the impeachment hearings and talking about Kobe Bryant's death. I couldn't understand for the life of me. I mean, I can understand the Trump hearings because the left-wing media loves impeaching Trump. They love talking about it. They're like, ah, we waited for this moment for so long. We can't talk about this virus that's going to kill thousands of people. We need to talk about Trump so that he can't be president next year. Um, so yeah, super lame of them to not cover, give any coverage. But I understand their decisions. And I think it's probably criminal for them to have done that. Um, not warning people as they should. I'm guessing there's some like uh reasons behind that i know that there's a lot of like deeper reasons why media does things and they try not to incite panic and they try not to hurt people so that's good but at least mention it so people can start looking into it anyway so in general i think that uh trump acted slow um because i was really concerned january 20th and it's probably two weeks later when I think we shut down the borders so two weeks slow to shut down the borders with China Um, it was fine it was well before many of the Democrats thought that he should close them I mean Nancy Pelosi was saying oh let's go celebrate Chinese New Year together in Chinatown let's go do all this Trump's a xenophobe he's only closing down the borders because he wants people to kill Chinese people and whatever else and I'm just like you guys are all idiots especially now in hindsight and you're still saying that he acted too slowly I'm like um where were you guys because at the time he was way ahead of you granted I was two weeks ahead of him but I'm also not in charge of like the largest uh, country financially in the world um and in charge of closing down the whole entire economy that's crazy um, so yeah, I think we acted a little bit too slow, but I also, once I, once I learned that, um, it was person to person transmission through asymptomatic people and the incubation period was up to 14 days, I was like, we're screwed. There's nothing anyone can really do. Now people might say, well, South Korea did some stuff and China did some stuff. China didn't do anything. Yeah, they shut down a bunch of stuff, but they're lying. They're lying about their numbers so bad. They were increasing by a rate of like 7,000 a day, and then it just stops to like 200 a day. Yeah, no, that didn't happen. It was basically the Chinese government saying to all their lower level people, hey, if you have increased people dying of coronavirus in your province, then you're gonna lose your job or you're gonna lose your head. That's what happened. There was like 45,000 urns delivered in the month of March in Wuhan. And these are like to people's families, reportedly to people's families that died of the coronavirus. So you got 45,000 people dead in one month. And they're saying that like only like 80,000 total died. Or actually, I think 80,000 total had the virus. So yeah, it was just like way off in the numbers. And reportedly they're having another another major outbreak right now um anyway so a lot of other countries oh south korea i mean yeah that is a good that is a good point um south korea has a lot more experience with viruses like this with sars and other things um with respiratory viruses from animals supposedly i'll get to more on that later but they also implemented um some social tracking using people's phones. Oh yeah, and China's also has like a million cell phones that are dead, uh, just turned off or no longer being paid on. 
So some people think that that's how many people actually died. I don't think it's a million people. I think a lot of those are just people that let their phones lapse or turn off because they didn't have to go to work anymore. But I do think that a good portion of those are people that had died. Um, but in South Korea, they were basically tracking, using people's phones to track where they, where everyone was going. And if someone had symptoms or someone had uh, contracted the virus, then they would go back and basically notify anyone that could have crossed their path and that really helped them to smash the curve, which is awesome. Something that Americans would not readily accept, especially in the spur of a moment thing. Now that the virus has already like spread around a bunch of places, um, I think more people would be on board. But you'd still need at least 80% of people to get on board with it uh, before it would really work. And I don't think they're going to get that kind of adoption, um, especially not not a voluntary opt-in and if they did it mandatory I don't know I think that they'd probably be okay doing it just because of how passive most Americans are right now they'd just be like okay I guess we got to do it um, but in general it's not something that most Americans would agree with um, they don't like being tracked even though it's already happening we know that it is but at least it's not as transparent um there's signs now that uh, California actually had the virus well before the first viruses were confirmed, and the first deaths even. And I think that's true. I think China, I think obviously California and especially San Francisco area had many flights from Wuhan coming in well before that, and so the likelihood that um, the virus was transmitted to people in California before Seattle is high. Uh, I actually think that I contracted it in California um, around Valentine's Day, and about two weeks later, um, I started getting really sick. It was like the sickest I've been in my whole entire adult life. About 36 hours of that, I was just delirious and basically dead. Um, my lungs were just full of crap. I could barely breathe. I remember waking up in the middle of the night, like not being able to breathe. And I thought at the time that it was all because of some demolition stuff that we were doing. Um, but then my two daughters and my son all caught the same sickness. Um, and so that made me think that actually it wasn't just because of the dust that I was inhaling. It was because I actually had some sort of sickness. So whether it was cold, flu, um, or coronavirus, I think it was coronavirus, just based on the symptoms. Um, but at the time, there wasn't any testing really it wasn't widespread testing and so who knows um but at least like five people that i know caught that from me my kids and two workers um so yeah um i do point is there is that i do think that california had it going around for much earlier and i actually think that a lot of those early people that were catching in california um probably got it from Disneyland the same that I did because I don't know I just had this feeling that right after it was announced that all these different municipalities in California were having outbreaks of the virus um, Bob Iger stepped down from Disney and I was just thinking like one he's stepping down because all this good stuff that he's been able to do all this great things he's been able to do he can still late live with that legacy and not have to live through a year of Disneyland and Disney resorts shut down, which would be hell for any CEO because Disney's going to lose so much money. But two, I think that they went through and looked at all of the people on their records and all the people that have been to Disneyland recently and said, Hey, a lot of these people that have coronavirus, uh, actually came to Disneyland crap. And so they kind of just hush hushed and you know I am just speculating I could be wrong but it felt that way at the time um coronavirus what else we got what else we got on the coronavirus front um I guess that's a positive note though is if it was in California for up to a month before they thought it was probably a couple weeks but up to a month um that means it's not nearly as dangerous as we thought there's a lot of people that are asymptomatic, a lot of people that um, might be immune. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why the virus isn't following the models that it's supposed to. 
there's supposed to be a lot more people dead, there's supposed to be a lot more people catching the virus, and obviously social distancing, whatever, is, is having a good effect, and if we just start everything back up, we'll probably see a huge increase of people getting sick, just like after 9-11, when all the flights stopped for a little while, there was actually a huge increase in people getting sick and dying from the flu, just the regular flu, and I I don't know exactly why, but I think it has to do with just the herd immunity thing where once we stop having some form of herd immunity and then releasing everyone back to the world, now the virus is kind of uh, compounded, you know, like more people are sick at the exact same time, which spreads more of the virus around, spreads more, this world's bumpy, so it's making my voice go, uh, spreads more of the virus around and, um, kind of means that you could actually catch the virus from two or three places in a single day, right? If if you're on a plane and go to dinner and then you go to your hotel room and the person serving you food, the waitress, uh, the, the waitress on the airplane or the stewardess on the airplane, the person serving you food, the person making you food and the bellhop all have the virus, you could catch that same virus from more people, which increases your viral load and makes it so you're more sick. That's my theory. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a doctor, but it makes sense. Um, so essentially, the saying is like, let's not do like the Spanish flu and go celebrate the end of the war and everyone go commingle and touch each other and hug each other all at once. That's not a good idea. We should make this gradual. Let people get the virus little by little. Um, I think we're going to see some great data out of Sweden. Sweden was one of the countries. Um, that basically didn't do much. They just kind of did a little bit of social distancing, but let society go on as normal. And a lot of early research indicated that more people they had like a three to three X death rate of the surrounding countries next to them. Um, but pretty minimal economic impact. Um, but we won't really know if that theory worked for three to six months because if their death rates now taper off and they stop having deaths, but, you know, Norway continues to have deaths at a sustained rate for the next three to six months, then we'll basically say that, okay, the same number of people died anyway, but you guys suffered also the economic toll too. And that's kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen, is we're going to see that the virus isn't nearly as deadly as we think it is, because most people that have it are asymptomatic, not getting tested, and are not part of the official numbers. And if all those people were tested and put in the official numbers, then that death rate drops significantly. And um, we're going to find out that the herd immunity thing works well. Um, the things that remain unknown is we don't know if you can catch it a second time. We don't know that if once you have it, and that's the hardest part, is we don't know if once you have it, like, does it cause blindness after 18 months? Or does it, you know, get into your nervous system and start destroying your brain? Like, probably not, but we don't know. Um, I think once you have those antibodies and once it's been fought off, that it's fought off forever. But more and more people are being tested to have it a second time. And, and that's interesting. Genuinely hoping that's not the case and hoping that it's just false positives, which I also think there's a few of those. I don't know what's going on with these tests, but it almost feels like just like 5% of the tests work <laughs> or 5% of the tests say, yeah, you're positive for the virus. I don't know. It feels weird. Um, that's about it for the virus. I, uh, I think that Trump acted a little bit slow, but pretty much on par with most other countries, maybe, you know, 10 to 20% better than other countries. Obviously, being the United States of America, we expect to be 100%, expect to be number one always. Um, but this was a very tricky and sneaky virus. And like I said, uh, incubation period of two weeks with no symptoms, that's just impossible. And when they were checking people's temperature at the border and stuff, I'm just like, that's not going to do anything. But um, really, it's putting him in an impossible situation. Um, if he closes the borders down too soon, um, and the virus turns out to be nothing, then he crashed the economy for no reason, and he's a horrible person. 
he closes them down too early, he's a xenophobe, and uh, that's the same thing. And if he closes them down too late, then we have skyrocketing um, deaths, skyrocketing problems um, surrounding the virus. So um, I think we're pretty much on par um, for a decent response, not a great response, but a good response and not a bad response. I don't think we're on the par of bad response. A lot of people complain about him firing different people. To my response is like, just because different organizations were shut down for budgeting reasons doesn't mean that other people weren't like focused on the pandemic. Like, just because a firefighter that specializes in bathroom fires got fired because they didn't have a budget for him doesn't mean that the other seven firefighters A, don't know how to fight the bathroom fire, or B, can't look for bathroom fires, or C, aren't going to the bathroom and putting out the fire anyway. So just because there was different teams at the CDC that were in charge of pandemic response doesn't mean that there weren't other people that just, you know, just got those responsibilities rolled onto them. It wasn't just like, oh, we're not going to pay attention to pandemics anymore. I was like, no, now you guys take over these guys' job. Yeah. So, um, I love you. Stay safe. Um, practice social distancing. Wash your hands often. Sanitize often. Um, yeah, just try to limit your social interactions, um, close interactions. Still interact with people um, for your mental health reasons. Talk to people through the door. Uh, go to the park and wave at people, smile at people. But... Yeah, um, keep your distance for the time being. If we can avoid catching potentially life-threatening viruses, just like the flu, um, and I'm not saying this is just like the flu, but if we can avoid it catching those diseases, let's avoid it. Um, especially until we have a vaccine. Just remember, you won't love it unless you love it.